It is talking baseball. The Astros take a three to two lead. Garrett Cole shuts him down. Joe Ross, he did his best. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Talking Baseball. Thank you for stopping in. We are close to ending our daily World Series episodes. We are potentially one game away. Scary times. No more baseball games to be played. Let's not talk about that yet. We had one played last night. The Astros beat the Nationals. They went to the Capitol and they took three games from the home team. The nerve of them. The guts. My name's John Boy. I'm coming to you from New Jersey. I got my co-host Jake. He's in Denver. He's wearing an I Love Baseball shirt. Seen on Colorado Rockies star pitcher Tim Melville. And this episode of Talking Baseball is brought to you by our most recent Patreon subscriber supporter whose whose handle is J pay jpk 501 but has chosen to go by chode masterson Mm. so thank you jpeck aka chode masterson for being our our one patron that signed up yesterday two dollars a month we appreciate the support thank you chode jake how are you doing Doing well, Jimmy. Yeah, we're uh, uh, we're up we're up to an elimination game. Uh, could be the end of baseball, as you're saying. I'm wearing my I love baseball shirt. Leave a review that says I love baseball, just in case. We have I um, love baseball shirts available in every team's colors. Shop dot Go check them out. Um, yeah, man. Uh, you know what? What are we? Five and zero on the road this World Series. I know you. You've got to be pretty stoked to use that fun fact on Yankee fans all of next year for the hubbub that goes into home field advantage. Um, I'll use it on right now. Hey, Yankee fans, you dumb. Go win the games, and we haven't. I think this is the first time we've seen the first five games go to the road team since 1996. A fond year for some. Yankee fans. What are you uh, fucking reading the almanac or something? Oh, sorry, I prep, bro. Jeez. You're over here throwing on Jorge Posada hats. Um, this isn't Jorge okay. Posada. It's actually I'm actually wearing it. It's a guy that played in the sixties. Okay, who is it then? Let's hear their Willie name Posada. for the fans. It's Willie Posada. Willie Posada also yeah. wore twenty. Yes. For the Yanks. Because those are Yankee colors. Well, debatable. Well, no. <laughs> no, it's not. The Washington Skylarks also wore this color. Okay, Willie Posada of the Washington Skylarks. Uh, there's no way the Buick Skylark. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited. Deposit traction. <laughs> Deposit traction. Um, my cousin Vinny, good flick. Out Ama- of theaters Ama- soon, Ama- Ama- sponsoring flick. this episode. This one, um, yeah, that's true. Okay. Make your point. <laughs> Astros. Astros. They're going to win the World Series. No. Double backpedal. You don't think the Astros are going to win the World Series? No, I think they are. And the, the whole Astros domination thing I talked about. But I'll say this. I mean, if you... We've been getting lost in a lot of the starting pitching matchup and talking about Cole and Verland or the bad guys waiting. I mean, just on a pitcher level, like if you had to pick one guy for game six, would you pick Verland or Strasburg? Oh, Strasburg. I picked Strasburg, exactly. I picked Strasburg over Verlander in game two. Right. So I, I don't know. I And, you know, maybe Max Scherzer, if they could somehow pull out game six, Scherzer could be there for seven. So there's still a po- potential fun twist to the series. But Houston's offense is now clicking on multiple levels. And Washington's offense, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't like that they only had four hits and two of them came from Soto? Well, I wouldn't say I love that. I would say, I mean, they had, what, three three runs in the homestand? Something like that? I think they got outscored uh, uh, 
Ah, I'm always, I always forget this stuff. I think like 207 to 3 or something like that. 207 to 3. It's looking like 19 to 3. Um, but yeah, man, they uh, they score 17 runs in the first two, and then they score three runs in the next three. Uh, that are Keedy start. I mean, you heard everyone in the stadium saying, you're kidding me, you're kidding me. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the one that's haunting them right now. But, hey, you win you win the next game with Strasburg on the mound, and then you just say, oh, well, all the road team wins every game, mm-hmm. so we're about to win the World Series. Yeah, patterns are patterns, and the road teams win Stop. games. Yeah? Say that again for the people that didn't hear it. Patterns our patterns who yeah buried in there remember that one damn it's good stuff i was gonna say it's normally a baseball podcast but it's kind of just a life podcast yeah uh, yeah i divvy out some life advice thanks willie posada yeah uh, shout out shout out <laughs> do you have a burn for this game Oh, yeah. Do you want to burn it? Or do you want to wait a little bit? <laughs> I mean, your call. If we want to dive into the patterns thing a little more, be interesting to see what we could get out of that. You want to talk about the boobs now or later? Uh, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Creep much? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to go into the burns. But first, a quick word from a sponsor. Do you like drinking coffee? Try this coffee. That was the commercial. Okay. Here's another one. (laughs) (laughs) Ready, set, burn. Locked up at two games apiece. A big game five in D.C. as Garrett Cole Calhoun tries to scrap his way to a W. Versus Mad Max, oh shit. Shures are scratched, it comes to Joe Ross, the boss. Welcome to the biggest game of your life, kid. Top two, Michael Jordan, Alvarez, Jumpman's one to left center, gives Houston the 2-0 lead. Top four, Correa takes a close 0-2 pitch, then crushes a hanging 2-2 slider, slides it into left field seats, and now it's 4-0 Strohs. Bottom seven. This is America. Woo! Childish Bambino. Juan Soto goes solo, hoping to light a spark for the Nats. 4-1. But a Yuli Gurriel RBI single, followed by a George Springer. He goes all Buzz Aldrin with a moon ball of his own. Cole was nasty. The Nats highlights were a fan taking a ball off the chest and a pair of ladies showing theirs. Houston 8, Nats 1, as Houston brings it back with a chance to win the World Series. A little childish Gambino, huh? Yeah. A little, a little Glover for the boys. Donald Glover, because Juan Soto's nickname is Childish Bambino. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. How old do you think Donald Glover is? 34. 36. Oh, wow. He looks yeah. he looks good. He's in good shape. Yeah, good for you. Yo, he's got a movie before he got famous, and it's... Oh, it opens up, and you're like, this is sucky, huh? Like, what the hell is this? And then me and Brad are watching, and as it goes on, it's really funny. I think you'd enjoy it. If I okay. find out the name of it, I'll let you know. Yeah, let uh if you find out the name of it, then let me know. That's what I just said. Yeah, but it's a pattern. Okay. Okay. It might be called Party Dudes. No. <laughs> Sounds like my type of movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was called. It was funny though, okay? They were like solving okay. a crime. I believe it so big time. It sounds like you don't believe me at all. Hey, how about that dude who took the ball off the chest holding the Bud Lights? He's going to get a Bud Light ad. Yeah. They uh Bud Light would tweeted at him and stuff like that on Twitter and well, he kind of deserves it, man. Yeah. Du- Double Tall Boys takes a home run ball off the chest and still snags it. 
Still made the play? That's pretty impressive. Some people are like, oh, he definitely he spilled beer later on. Like, no, he gently placed the beers on the ground, but there was some upshoot. Like, get, come on. The guy's a hero. Yeah. Taking he the ball off job. the chest is awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's literally full Billy, not Billy Madison, uh, the hockey one. Or, yeah, Billy Matt. No. No, Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. You're Jeez. Dumb. Yeah. I'm dumb. Sorry, Willie Posada. You think uh, Zach Campbell should change his style? Go no glove, only Kester with his chest now? On multiple levels, yes. This guy just changed the game? Uh, I'll let you and Zach figure it out on your own. Okay. Cool. We will. Update. Can't find the name of the movie that Donald Glover was in at all. How about the baseball? The baseball game? Yeah. I thought we were going to talk about the girls that flash their boobs. Can. That was kind of wild. She's banned for life now. Did you see yeah. her Instagram? She's just a habitual boob flasher. Yeah. It's genius. They pinned her as like the the ringleader. Like on the MLB, right. it was like, you're in trouble for exposing yourself. Coercing to pr- others. And coercing others. Like, shots fired at the second girl that flashed. Basically told her she was a mindless drone. Like, you only did this because she coerced you. You have no thoughts of your own. Yeah, I mean, maybe girl number two is actually a baseball fan. Like, I think Julia Rose wanted to be banned. Oh, yeah. Like, that D- was her end game. Oh, mystery team. That's the name of the movie. Mystery team. Got it. I can now walk away Huge. from that happily. All right. Do you think that they sat in those seats all the way up till the seventh inning? Like they were like the seventh innings when we do it. No. Okay. No. I think they went up there to flash the camera knowing they get kicked out of the game. Cool. And we've finalized that conversation. Discussed. All right. Scherzer having to get scratched sucks. We were so, yeah. ex- so excited for Cole versus Scherzer. We did a whole, yeah. our whole episode yesterday was how excited we were. They were both going to empty the tank, go 120 if they needed to. It was going to be awesome. And then, I don't know. I feel bad for Scherzer because no one knows what pain players are in. So there's going to be assholes that think he could have pitched through it. You have to trust. Oh, I don't think so. I think Scherzer, his reputation precedes him in the best way possible. I didn't see anyone questioning him because he's the biggest psycho known in baseball. I saw some people, but I think they were just flippantly throwing out like pussy. But, I mean, you have to trust him that he can't throw if he doesn't throw. Yeah, but I anyone with an actual that- human, a human opinion or their actual face in their profile, nobody actually questions Sir Scherzer. Yeah. And if, he, if he's, like, good for game seven, like, I don't even understand how that works. But The old switcheroo, man. They knew Strasburg is going to win game six because he's the best World Series pitcher ever, so they just saved Scherzer for game seven. Oh, wow. But they knew Scherzer wouldn't go along with it on his own. He wouldn't pull himself from game five for game seven on his own, so they sent someone in the middle of the night to beat the shit out of him. Okay. Let's put that in the theory bucket. Yeah, it's the only buckets I ever use. That's what the oh, that's the only buckets you ever use. I'm full of them. I walk around stepping in them. I think, yeah, and we'll put this in another theory bucket that they were like, "Hey, Cole's really good and might fucking beat Scherzer, so let's punt this. We'll do the road team patterns game. They'll burn Cole in game five. We have Scherzer arrested for game seven. Yeah, we're trying to get off pattern talk is all. Oh, I didn't know. I thought the pattern was pattern talk. Scherzer's press conference, did you watch it when he was talking? I tried to watch it, but he was talking so slow that I was like, oh, my God, I can't listen to you. I never heard no. Scherzer like talk before. I think he was sad, though, about not yeah, being able definitely. to pitch in the World Series. So It'll be interesting if he can go Game 7, if there is a Game 7. I do like – I thought it was going to be over Game 6 for sure, but now you've got this whole Strasburg – can beat Verlander, and then and then it's Granky versus maybe Scherzer, game seven, and I'm in I'm in love with that idea. Yeah, it's it's a really fun idea. It's it's tough to wrap the head around just because I mean all of Washington's bats are kind of dead, and like Houston, 
their lineup had thinned out, but now the depth of their lineup is going. Jordan Alvarez with the big game. Their catchers are doing things. Gurriel looks good. Um, so that's the thing. I mean, Strasburg would have to put up, you know, we we started this postseason with the asterisk. He had a couple good playoff starts. Now he's proved that he's bona fide. Awesome. This, this would be some serious punctuation uh, if in game six he could literally shut them down and bring it to seven. Because right now, and I saw it was, well, it wasn't the anniversary of this the other day, but I saw it going around Twitter, and it is really good baseball. But if Houston loses game six, I mean, their ass is in the jackpot. Um, right now, the Nats' ass is in the jackpot big time. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the, the Nats can still flip the script with one game with their one of the best postseason pitchers in history, so it's exciting for that. I still think we need to talk about this game a little bit before we do. Yeah, you keep the getting next ahead one. of yourself. I wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to clap for AJ Hinch and the Astros. Okay. All right, hold on. Let me put my coffee cup down. Alvarez gets the start, and it proved fruitful. So. Good job by Alvarez for coming through when they put the trust in him, and good job for them for putting the trust in him, giving the start, because um, he didn't start the game before, right? And I don't think he started game three. No. This so he, this was his first start in the National League games, where he has to play the outfield. And boy, oh boy, did it work! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gets uh, and there was like a line drive that was hit right at him at one point. I uh I wonder if Joe Ross maybe has some. Well, maybe they were planning on doing it anyways, because I mean Scherzer is as tough as it gets. But I wonder if Joe Ross has some, uh, some tough splits. How about hey, uh, J- Joe Ross deserves a couple claps too. Um, that was a pretty brutal ask, huh? <laughs> yeah, I and and the coolest moment of the game for me was Nationals fans cheering for Joe Ross as he took the mound. Did you see that? Like as he was yeah. walking from bullpen to warm up and everything, they gave him a standing ovation, which is just kind of the cool human element of being a fan where like you you can put aside how disappointed you are with Scherzer not being able to pitch and you might be crushed cuz now you're like what the fuck like deep down inside Nationals fans, they didn't have faith that Joe Ross could outpitch Garrett Cole, but they knew that hey, if he's going to He's going to need the fans behind him. And then they yeah. all get on their feet and clap for him. I, I mean, that's the the wholesome part of sports that we all love. So I thought that was really cool. And then, yeah, man, two home run balls. Really? Two pitches. Yeah, the uh, the beauty of sports. Yeah, and uh, um, just back to Alvarez, it looks like Joe Ross has pretty big splits. Um, I don't. I don't know if it was factored in before or after Scherzer, but yeah, lefties hit 303 with an 856 OPS uh, against Ross, where where righties were 239, 667 OPS. Um, so that that definitely seems like it was a factor in Alvarez playing and did pay off. And yeah, man, it's it's tough because the Jordan Alvarez home run was a pretty good pitch. Um, dude just drove it to left center, um, and it. It, it was it's good for baseball in general because Jordan Alvarez was having an awful playoffs that he shows baseball why he's one of the future big names in the game. I mean, he he broke records and stuff this year. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, the Correa one's brutal. Um, and I don't know if we want to do the whole umpire stuff, but, you know, he throws an absolute pitcher's pitch that had a 50-50 chance of being called depending on the catcher's reaction. And uh, he doesn't get it, and then he hangs a pitch two pitches later, whatever it was, and it's it's yeah. gone. We well, still hung the pitch, so but I right, uh, yeah, I I want to be like delicate because Astros fans are so sensitive already. The Nationals did not lose this game because of the umpire. No, and Ryan Zimmerman did the veteran thing after the game. He goes, we you know we didn't lose to the umpires. We lost to Garrett Cole. <laughs> yeah, they. It, I mean, yeah. it's not no one anyone trying to say that is wrong that being said lance barksdale put on a a fucking display of immaturity and terribleness behind the plate last night yeah it's Uh, a clinic of uh, i mean the personality you for all my umpires listening 
the the personality you need to be an umpire is kind of a weird one. <laughs> you're you're someone that wants to be so entrenched in the game you love, but also like hated by pretty much everyone around it, um, unless you do a perfect perfect job, which is impossible. And you kind of have to be power hungry because you have to be in in control of these like celebrities. And yeah, I mean Barksdale, it, it he was letting the reactions of the players dictate the calls and that's like worst case scenario that's that's about as bad as it gets like if an ump just misses a call because they miss it you say okay you're human if an ump starts miss or changing calls because of players reactions it's like dude this isn't even baseball anymore if anyone doesn't know that i posted it and like you can hear the ump say something like you're taking off on me and Gomes like, oh, it's my fault. It's my fault. Yeah. And it's like, that's just not how it should work. Someone replied, said, imagine, I, who was, I don't know who was pitching that. I don't think it was Ross anymore. Was it Rainy? I think it was Rainy. It's like, um, it was Rainy. Imagine, like, you know, your whole career is built off being able to get that pitch in that spot and you fucking nail it at a big moment and the ump just goes, nah. <laughs> like, come yeah. on. Come on. Anyway, you know who else was really stupid? Me, Jake. I didn't watermark that video I edited. Mm. And I edited it really well. I was very happy with it. I didn't watermark it. It's got 645,000 views. And I already saw it ripped and shared on other accounts without our watermark. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. It's in such a rush to get it out. But yeah, Lance Barkdale. There will be no recourse for that. The Robles one was even worse. No, they're both bad. I don't... Both they're bad. both bad. <laughs> like, the one we'll, we'll right down the middle and the Robles one. Yeah, it's... Um, people say, like, it's getting worse. I don't think it's getting worse. I think it's just getting highlighted how emotionally it's been. Like, can you imagine in the 60s, 70s? Like, umps probably oh, yeah. were fucking t- 10 times worse. Yeah. I, if you showed up and ump the... I mean, when we were in literally Little League... The thing was like, hey, don't show up the ump because they'll call the next pitch anywhere a strike. Like, you hear ex-players talk about that on broadcasts. Like, oh, man, if you ever showed up an ump like that, it didn't matter where the next pitch was. Like, imagine if <laughs> if Twitter was around then. And that's, that's what it is. Everything's just amplified more because baseball started figuring out social media, um, and you're a good example of it, that, uh, I, I mean, yeah, it's just it's people are seeing it now. Um and and yeah, it's they they need a better solution. And I I don't know if it's going to be eventually challenging pitches. You know the big robo umps talk. They're they don't have robo umps perfected yet. So I I don't know what the solution is going to be. They will but, have uh, them perfected at one point. And I don't. And f- people love saying you think it's easy. You go do it. I don't think it's easy. No, I think it's that's too the problem. Hard. I think it's impossible for a human umpire to consistently call. Balls and strikes. I think yes. it's too hard. That's the opposite. Like I don't think any human can do it. But yeah. humans can call the calls last night. That was just uh, Lance Barkdale being a dickhead. Right. He uh, he started making it his own game. And yeah, the yeah I don't know. I think the Robles one is a little more pathetic when Zimmerman walks on uh, that pitch, but better before it, and then Cole goes four inches outside of that and then he calls it just because Robles starts going down the line it's like dude this nobody wants to see this um and it's yeah I it's a problem and that's uh I I had a tweet from mid-year that that went fairly viral it was just like hey there's gonna be a call I I mean look what we're talking about right now so far the talking points of this baseball game are boobs uh the ball going off the Bud Light man's chest and the umpires and you're and an Alvarez sucks. and you're an Alvarez we have talked about that, but I don't think that's that's not the national conversation. Yeah. When when the national conversation talks about this baseball game, the baseball is going to come last, and Garrett Cole's performance shouldn't be last, and Jordan Alvarez shouldn't be last, Should and be Carlos f- Correa having the tied for the shortstop record for home runs in World Series, George Springer having the third most home runs by a non-Yankees player in the World Series. I got stats and shit, bro. Yeah, okay, buff, reading your almanac biff buff buff biff thanks wow freudian slip yeah how about it 
Uh, no, Cole doesn't deserve to be talked about. Dude only had nine strikeouts. He's a bum. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, strike out 10 people, Cole. That's kind of your thing. Double digit strikeouts. Yeah. If you don't get that, everyone thinks you're a loser. It's a bad outing. Jeez. I mean, Cole's good. <laughs> Did you see, like, the curve he was throwing? Yeah. Defied gravity. Yeah. He, uh, like, it, like, shouldn't, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be able to do that. He's filthy, man, and he like he doesn't even use those pitches a lot because his fastball's so good. They're like, yeah, he's really he decided to go with the off speed this game, and it's like, oh my god, <laughs> that sucks. That's um, what he said in his incredible. post game. His post games are pretty interesting because he's like kind of really honest, and he, he has like a memory of every pitch. But he said, uh, yeah, we kind of realized, you know, that's kind of the better game plan. There is just go curveball more. Yeah. Like, oh, he, uh, easy enough. I think You're... he's going to get paid pretty well. Yeah, someone said something on the broadcast, like, he's going to set records. And it's like, oh, obviously. Right. You know, everyone sets a record every offseason. Pretty much. That's like how it works. Yeah, I mean, there was a lull there for a little bit. Like, after, because there was a while where, like, the A Rod and Zito contracts were, like, these terrible albatrosses that teams kind of reeled it in a little bit. I um, still think, but now we're back. I still think the top free agent always sets the market. Like, Cole's going to get more than Corbin, and Corbin got more than the big guy before him. Like, it's just, like, how kind of money works. Kind of. But, <clears throat> yeah, he's going to get a lot of money. Really good. And he's probably, it's unfair. The fan base that he goes to will not be kind because what Cole did this season is not repeatable. It's a near perfect season from start yeah. to finish, the, the regular season and then to do it in the postseason. I mean, I, it might be, you would have to look back through the annals of history which is your favorite hobby, but I'm sure there's others that compare, but it's a near perfect season from a starting pitcher. Like if he, yeah, du if he it, duplicates this, that's amazing. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it becomes less about the regular season because an impressive regular season, an impressive regular season, if wherever Garrett Cole goes and he's this Garrett Cole in the postseason or the team goes on to win a world series, I think the fan base cares about that. Um, and, you know, obviously personality and stuff ties in. But, you know, CC Sabathia, he signed a giant contract with the Yankees. He wins that World Series in his first year. Um, and I don't know. He's beloved by the fan base forever. So, um, yeah, uh, Garrett Cole is going to get paid, paid. And he, I don't know, he's he's going to be, I'm expecting him not to be necessarily regular season stats this good, but you should expect the arm talent yeah. and everything to be that special for a few more years. Mm-hmm. How about our boy Joe Smith coming in? Married or dating Allie LaForce? Did you hear that? Really? Yeah. How did he do that? Um, I don't know. I think they probably went on a date. Um, and I don't know. From there, they kind of just hit it off, I guess. Good for him. Yeah. Was she, um, was she covering baseball? Is that how they met? I don't know. I, she she, to... she was uh, she got her she got her big thing with the uh, uh, March Madness. I remember that's when she like came onto the scene. Everyone was like, "Who is this talented woman?" Well, you forget that she won Miss Teen USA in two thousand five. So I did um, forget that. I forgot. You know what? I forgot how big a fan you are of Miss Teen USA. <laughs> oh yeah, I uh, doesn't get out of my sights. Uh, yeah, Joe Smith, man, he's having an incredible playoffs. Um, again, another one of the old guys that we've been talking about and there is something. So I hate and love sidewinders. Okay. Um, because a, it sucks. <laughs> they, they suck to hit against. Um, they're kind of a nightmare and you're just like, okay, the ball's going every which way. A lot of sidewinders don't have good control. Joe Smith's kind of been putting on a sidewinder clinic this postseason, so that's been cool. Um, 
the part I love about Sidewinders is that's like the dudes that love baseball the most, man. That's digging deep into the barrel of tricks. It's them, knuckleballers. It's like you are on your last baseball lifeline looking for a way to stay in the game. Uh, and Joe Smith's done it for, I don't know, 13 years now, whatever it is. So, um, yeah, and you saw him and Hinch have the weird baseball embrace slash stare each other in the eyes. Did you see that? I did not see that. Sounds nice. It was intense, man. Like, it, it looked like it was going to be the big, like, I don't know, manager-player hug. Like, dude, can can you believe it? This is awesome. But Hinch just kept his arms like this on Joe Smith's shoulders. And they, like, talked for a while, almost like nose-to-nose. I was feeling it. You were into it? You, you Hinch was like, you know, uh, this is my second-to-last game, part of this organization, and I want you to come to the Mets with me. Did you hear the new bombshell Mets rumor? No, I block them out. What is it? A Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Who started that? Marshan? That uh I'm not sure. They uh A Rod and the Will Ponds were were seen out to dinner the other night. <laughs> Dude, I A Rod, big fan of yours. I think you're a great yeah. baseball mind. Uh, I do not think you'd be a good manager. Well, no, it just blows my mind. Can we talk for a second? Oh, yeah, I'd love to open forum. I'm still if hunting around Alex... the internet trying to find how Ali LaForce and Joe Smith met. You're Alex Rodriguez. You're J Lo's fiance. You're your life and you're like a lifestyle person now. You show up at different events, you're doing stuff with J Lo, you're doing A Rod stuff. You're basically wherever you want to be when you want to be. If you're a MLB manager, <laughs> you're like trapped for 80% of the year. Like no way A-Rod would take a managerial job. The only way would be if he's crazy enough to think he has to prove himself, which A-Rod has always thought his whole life. So there is a chance because of the A-Rod factor. But I don't know, man. Like why? It doesn't add up. I mean, I, I mean, my initial reaction was a belly laugh, and if it's yeah. real, I will make a bigger belly laugh. Oh my god! I mean, I don't want to say mean things about Arod because I feel like there's a possibility we can work with him in the future. He follows us on Instagram and stuff, but like, yeah. come on, not gonna. He's the biggest preparation guy in the world ever. Yeah, but he preps like how to talk, right? It's like when Wayne Gretzky tried to manage. It's like, hey, man, you don't really understand, like, how it feels to not be the one percent of talent. Yeah. You know, some of us can't just go do that. Right. It's a little different. So whatever. Smith and LaForce met in 2011 when LaForce was working with Fox 8 in Cleveland and he was pitching on the Indians. Wow. So there you go. And he had a 50% chance of getting hunt- Huntington's disease, and they do a lot of charity yeah. work together. They're active in that community. Yes. So now we can put that to rest. Finally. Finally. How about uh, Turner Eaton Rendon going 0 for 11? It's not good. And um, Cole said... You know, the bottom of the order, his eyes light up. He was like, God, I had that battle with Zimmerman. I know I didn't really have to attack him because I wasn't going to give in to Robles and Gomes. And it's like, yeah, shots fired, Robles and Gomes. I mean, and even look at look at what he did to Zimmerman uh, with a couple of those pitches like that was brutal. Um uh- yeah, and I, I think it's uh, it's it's the new kind of what to watch for in this series. Uh, a, whoever Houston's rolling out at catcher is doing their job. I, I think that might be one of the funny things. You know, you and I have had some good conversations about catching platoons and how it kind of sucks for a baseball team if you have a catching platoon. Houston's showing an example of <laughs> an awesome one right now because uh, I think the numbers with Maldonado paired with Cole are incredible, and when both of them hit, it looks really well. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you're 
if you're the Nats man, uh, this day off is more than welcome. You're, it's it's almost exactly what we said <laughs> after Game Two of the World Series. Like Houston, all right, you take your day off, you collect your breath, and then you go in and do your thing. Uh, the Nats are telling themselves the same thing right now. Collect your breath, move on, go beat Verlander. Have to. Easy as only that. option. Easy as that. Jake, breaking news. Larry Rothschild, no longer the Yankees pitching coach. Yeah. Do you think he's going to go to the Phillies? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hang out with Girardi and Topper again. Who's 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 there? Arietta? Jake Arietta is in Philadelphia. Aaron Nola. Uh, that's that's crazy. Yankee fans are going to rejoice. Dave Robertson. All right. Anything else about this game? I mean, the late runs I don't really care about. Again, I've said that multiple times. Like, wh- uh, but it was Hudson. So actually, you know what? That's actually bad. Yeah, maybe that is something to to pen in there. Like, oh yeah, that's uh. They they will need him if they have the lead in the next game again, unless Strasburg does something special, which he's capable of. Uh, yeah, they they got to Hudson, and again he hadn't pitched in a couple of days. Uh, Doolittle gave up a hit and a walk, but he he doesn't give up any runs. Rainey somewhat settled down for them. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean Houston. Um, yeah, I don't know, like Springer, Correa, a lot of these guys, Altuve's got a chance to set the playoff hit record for for one playoff. Like this Houston team is on the cusp of being viewed as a crazy special team. Um and I don't know, Washington still has a little chance to play spoiler. Yeah, I mean, but what you said earlier in the show is like when Houston's got their depth rolling, like Maldonado reached base twice. Correa uh, had two RBIs and obviously a big hit. Alvarez had three hits. Um, Guriel, Guriel two. two hits. Bregman didn't do anything, but whatever. At Grand Slam yesterday, he can rest a little bit. Brantley didn't have a hit, but he did get a walk. But, like, yeah, look at that. It's the middle of the, uh, the six, seven, eight kind of. We're on base a lot and Springer. So, I mean, they got a lot going right right now. Yeah. And, I mean, right now, I mean – Kendrick has the one hit yesterday, but he he hasn't really been a threat. Trey Turner's starting to have what looks like a brutal series. He needs to do something and quick. Uh, Robles hasn't really done anything. So, yeah, I, I, there's right now there's a lot of holes in the Nationals lineup and pretty much none in Houston's. Yep. All right, let's take a quick break, and then we'll talk about a little. We've already done it a lot, but this game six. <laughs> Game six, Jake, back in Houston, off day, lets the bullpen arms rest a little bit when they did have, you know, Hudson just went 1.2 game before, that allows him the rest, and it's Strasburg, you know, I was just, kept telling myself it's Verlander in an elimination game, I think he's lost every elimination game that he's pitched, he's lost the last five starts in the World Series anyway, but, like, he had a chance to eliminate the Yankees. They beat him. And I believe when that happened, someone said Verlander hasn't won a potential elimination game yet, which is kind of bizarre and kind of just cherry-picking a weird stat because he's still Verlander. But Strasburg has been better than him. And, right, that's, like, facts? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 big facts. I mean, Verlander... Um... Okay, so let's do Verlander career in the World Series. Six starts. He's 0-5 with a 5.73 ERA. That's 33 innings pitched. Um, and, yeah, it's a small sample size if you want to do the analytical stuff on that, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, I mean, this postseason, he his first start against Tampa Bay, he dominated. He was seven innings pitched, one hit, three walks, eight strikeouts. Since then, he hasn't been full Verlander. His last four starts, all in the playoffs, um, he's 1-3, or the team is 1-3, excuse me. He's 0-3, 23.1 innings, a 5-4 ERA. So he really hasn't been um, the Justin Verlander that we that we all know. And hey, maybe I, if you wanted to put a Houston spin zone on this, you know, may, let, let's say Justin Verlander has had a 
hey, maybe you know, maybe I'm not the Justin Verlander that I have been the past couple years. You know, maybe this is his swan song, and he just fully empties the tank in what could be, you know, one of his best memories ever. On the other side of it, Strasburg, dude, he's 47 career playoff innings, a 1-3-4 ERA, 64 strikeouts in 47 innings. Um, he's been nothing short of dominant in the playoffs to – the, the I mean it's it's historic at this point. So um yeah, I mean if if you're Washington like you're hurting right now cuz you just lost 3 games at home and you got dominated, but it it's not like you're reaching for stuff to believe in. Like it it would be a shocking to no one if Steven Strasburg goes out and pitches 7 inning shutout. No. Yeah, it'd be cool. Would you be shocked if the Astros put up like a 7 spot in the first inning? It's been a, a it's seven been, spot. Yes. Patterns, um, patterns, patterns, Jake. Patterns. Elimination um, games, big innings in the first. Yeah, you said that you were eyeing that for the Yankees, too, and that didn't happen. Yeah, but this um, is I National that, League. The, that that the, pattern got no, broken. Well, but, one of the teams is for sure. That's what I'm saying. Um, the Nationals <laughs> have to allow but it to But one happen. of them is not. Jake, um, it's a pattern. The Cardinals did it to the Braves, no right? Can you let me tell you the pattern? The Cardinals Patterns did it. Broken. The Cardinals did it to the Braves. Then it got right. done to the Cardinals. The Nationals right. did it to the Cardinals. Now does it get done to the Nationals? That's a fucking pattern. No, um, it won't. And uh, if it I, does, uh, you have to eat a fucking big bug. I'm fine with that. Okay. I'm more than fine with that. That's normally the plan, anyways. Um, and yeah, so this is a flashback to Game Two. Psychedelic flashback. Flashback. Um, both teams scored two runs in the first last time. Um, that would be the only run Houston got until the ninth when they hit that electric home run <laughs> down 12 to two when they did the lights and the train and everything. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, not going to do my first inning spiel. If you don't know, I mean, read a book about it, eat your own bugs. Um, they, they need something out of Turner, man. Turn, Turner seemed like he was. He was having a really good playoffs until this series. Um, and Rendon's been a little quiet. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the first well, inning's going to be important. Rendon got him last time. Um, and then, if you remember, Bregman hit that changeup that Strasburg left for a home run into the Crawford boxes that kind of sparked him. Uh, so that's kind of the must-watch stuff in the first inning. You think Strasburg but, opens uh, him up first pitch changeup? Have to. Yeah. Have to. Um, show him you ain't scared. Buck Johnson says he's happy because it sounds like you're back on the bandwagon. Never been on the bandwagon. Uh, never might be attacking the bandwagon. I might be the opposite of the bandwagon. No, you're rooting for the uh, Nationals in Game Six. Big time rooting for the Nationals. Yeah. Um. So are you? Yeah, I'm on the bandwagon for Game Six. Oh, you can't just jump on and off a bandwagon. That's exhausting. We talked about how you'd never be able to get on a bandwagon with your little legs. No, the Velcros. I think the Velcros. My biggest thing, this is the biggest thing I need, Jim. Yeah? Better life? The Nationals dugout mm -hmm. needs to be electric. They need to bring their own speakers and play Baby Shark in the dugout. You need the glasses on the guys. You need everyone being silly. Like, Dave Martinez, he, I, I saw his press conference after the game, and he kind of gave, like, the a little bit of the tough guy coach, like, yeah, we know... We know what we have to do, and we're going to win, and we're, we're going to do it. Um, which, you know, you have to because you're the manager. But I don't know. My, my pregame Dave Martinez speech would be like, yo, guys, we got here being having fun and being silly and being the weird old guys. Like, that, that dugout needs to be electric. And, you know, they, the part of the reason they haven't been is because they've scored three runs over the past three games. So they need something to spark them. Um, ideally earlier or maybe it's not maybe they throw Kurt Suzuki back there and he can get a big hit and make it the Suzuki World Series but they they need anything I do like the road team just constantly winning game seven sure just give me a game seven that's all I've asked for all I've asked for people say who you want to win the World Series I say I'm rooting for extra innings in game seven wow yeah it's a bold ask it's a big ask it's a big ask and I'm rooting who so yesterday we did like who do we want the heroes to be in game game five. Right. 
We didn't have Alvarez even as an option. Like we wanted Altuve no. to be the hero. Alvarez and Cole, but we knew Cole would do that. Yeah. Soto did have two hits, did have a home run. Who needs to come up big versus Verlander? Who came up big last game versus Verlander? Well, that's what I was telling you. Uh, Turner Turner had a walk, Eaton singled, and then Rendon had the double that scored scored two. Um, so that's how they got to him in the first. And then um, oh, it's such a first inning the, game with him. Yeah, it's it's that's what it's been. And then Suzuki got him. That was so. Yeah, you have to play Suzuki. He's got the numbers versus Verlander. So yeah, big team Suzuki. Big team Suzuki. Big team Suzuki. And yeah. e- Eaton was just slapping Verlander around. He got two hits, two RBIs, two runs. Yeah, that was that was the big inning. Um, you know, that was the Bregman inning. Ass crabs. He had the nice hit. Um, All right. So now we, uh, one of these pitchers better not get scratched. That's my least want. Yeah, I think we're okay on that. Well, you don't know. I think that's why I said that. No one can ever predict death or injuries. You can kind of predict injuries, but that feels like a wormhole for another time. Sometimes you can predict death, too. Yeah. You get to a certain point. So we'll take away that whole quote, then. Okay. Erase it. Strike it. Strike that. Reverse it. I just hope we get a pitcher's duel. That's what we're rooting for in this one. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Tough break. (sighs) To get the DH back, that's cool. So who does that help, the DH coming back into play? It helps Kendrick. He can play there, right? And it helps uh, now that fucking Yordan's hot. You put Redick back in right field for his defense, and Yordan at DH. Yep. Yeah. Helps both teams. It just adds a hitter, so. That's good. Yeah, I mean, we were, uh, we were talking about the part of the national success. It felt like they had the lineup depth. It felt like Robles had become a second leadoff hitter. You had Astrubal Cabrera, who's been playing really well for them towards the bottom of their lineup. So if you're the Nationals, that's what you're telling yourself. If you're the Astros, you're saying it big time favors us because Alvarez is back. He's going to rake. Um, and, you know, you can have some elite defense in, in the outfield. And, yeah. Yeah. All right. Rooting for a game seven or the Astros to score seven plus in the first because I like patterns. Patterns. Patterns, baby. Patterns. We'll be back Wednesday morning to recap game six. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Jake, last word. Too late.